Buenos días, yo soy Stephanie de Apex Languages y esto es Vocabulario Vivo. Welcome everyone, it's Spanish time. Today, we're going to talk about the verb to have, tener. For the past couple of weeks, we've been studying verbs, most recently, ER verbs. What's that pattern again? First person singular, I, or in Spanish, yo, usually ends in an O, like leo and comprendo. Third person singular, he, she, it, and formal you, or Spanish, el, ella, and usted, ends in E, like le and comprende. And third person plural, ellos, ellas, ustedes, feature E, N at the end, leen and comprenden. Last week, we learned the two verbs for to know. Saber, which is to know something, and conocer, which is to know someone. These are a little ir irregular, but only in the first person. Yo sé y yo conozco. Repeat that one more time with me. Sé, conozco. So, if I wanted to say, I know the word, I would say, sé la palabra. But if I wanted to say that I know the teacher, it'd be conozco a la profesora. The other forms are regular. Not that bad, right? Well, unfortunately, this next verb is not quite as newbie friendly. Nonetheless, it is very useful. Tener, to have. Looking at the chart, you can see that this verb also has a unique first person singular form. Repeat after me. Tengo. 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 Then, in the other forms, it has an entirely new pattern of irregularity. We lose the G, but add an I before the first E. And because this is Spanish, remember that you do have to pronounce each of those letters separately. So, in the singular, we have tiene, tiene, tiene. And in the plural, for they, tienen, tienen, tienen. Good job. Now, if you're going to have something, you need something to have, right? So I've collected a couple of nouns that are as useful to know in the classroom as around the office, starting with una lapis, a pencil. Repeat that with me, una lapis. Una lapis, una lapis. Just lapis is pencil. So what is this una? Well, up until this point, I've just used el and la with my nouns, the two forms of the. Una, along with un, means a uh or un, when you want to be less specific. That is what these articles do, after all, describe specificity. El and la and un and una work basically the same as the and a uh in English. So there's nothing much to learn except to remember that your articles must match the noun in number and gender. Un goes with masculine nouns and una with feminine ones like lapis. If you're describing more than one thing, you would use either unos or unas, adding an S. Incidentally, do you see the resemblance with uno? I'm sure even English speakers like you know the basic uno, dos, tres. If you don't, uh, uno is both a restaurant and a card game. It means one. When you count in Spanish, you'll need the three letter variation. But when the word is used in front of a noun, either as an article or adjective, make sure to either drop the O or make it feminine, etc. Fun fact, did you know that our own uh, A and UN are also related to the word one? Like a rock and a river though, the years have worn A down to next to nothing. That's how language changes over the years. So, once again, lapis is pencil. But what is pen? That's a bit more complicated. Here I have three common words for pen. Una pluma, 
un bolígrafo, un lapicero. Una pluma, that one's most common in Mexico, and is the term I originally learned. Pluma is also the word for feather, so it's very old school. Think quill and ink. Bolígrafo is the standard in Spain, and lapicero is more Central American. That's not all. In Ecuador, they say asfero, so there's lots of different terms all over the Spanish-speaking world. As you can see, the whole pen thing is a bit of a mess. The most common, if I had to pick one, is probably bolígrafo. Sorry, I know it's the longest and weirdest one to say, that figures, so let's just practice it a couple more times. Bolígrafo. Bolígrafo. Un bolígrafo. Uh, but for now, in these videos, I'm just going to stick with pencils. You've got bigger things to worry about right now. If you want, though, feel free to write these down in your notebook, where you should be taking lots of notes, right? Notebook is actually our next word. What are the chances? In Spanish, you can call that un cuaderno. This word has a little bit more variation, but not nearly as much. So repeat it with me. Un cuaderno, cuaderno, cuaderno. What do you call a regular book? Un libro. Repeat that one with me. Libro, libro, libro. So let's use our other verb that we learned. Yo leo un libro, leo un libro. Leo muchos libros, that's I, I read lots of books. Okay, so, leo libro, I read a book. Leo un libro, I read a book. Uh, finally, for today at least, one more for you, we have una computadora. Not too hard to guess that one. It may be a long word, but at least it's not hard to pronounce if you take it slowly. Practice with me now. Una computadora. 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 Una computadora. Okay, a little faster there. One last thing before moving on I wanted to talk with you about is it. Yes, it. You know, the pronoun. It's very useful for shortening your sentences. Instead of, I love my computer, you can just say, I love it. In English, we use it to basically describe anything that's not human. But because everything in Spanish has gender, there's really no need for a truly neuter pronoun. Nonetheless, even though it doesn't actually translate perfectly the same, if you want a pronoun to replace other nouns in your sentence, your two best options are lo and la. Lo for masculine items and la, unsurprisingly, for feminine ones. In the plural, los and las. Now, finally, let's see this vocabulary in action. Translate this for me, please. Do the employees have pencils? So I'm gonna be asking a lot of questions. Uh, the important thing to remember is that in Spanish, no do. We've, we've talked about that before. Uh, you just uh, use inflection with your voice. You raise your voice at the end of the sentence to indicate that you're asking a question. So that part's easy. Employees, do you remember the word for employees? Empleados, okay, make sure there's an S to make it plural, empleados. What form of tener do I need? Well, this is third person plural, it's they, right? So, tienen, with an N at the end, tienen. Pencils, well, the word for a pencil es una lapis. Let's see what the plural form is. Los empleados tienen lapices. Uh, you'll see that the Z dropped off. It was replaced by a C. That's just a spelling thing in Spanish. Um, so that's a little weird, but the plural form of lapis is lapices. You also lose the accent mark. Uh, but everything else, nice and easy, okay? Los empleados tienen lapices. Los empleados tienen lapices. All right. Yes, they do have them. 
them here I'm using a plural form uh, for it it doesn't really be uh, be plural easily okay yes what's the word for yes see they do have them now in English we use do for emphasis again no do okay we're gonna use the same form of tenad and then we want to use it okay so what is my feminine plural form of it okay lapis again is plural las so si las tienen hold on here here's an important thing in Spanish you can add it to the end of your verb okay now in, in Spanish um, I have it right in English I have it in Spanish uh, it would be connected to the end like physically attached it would be one word um, but more common is actually to put the it in front of the verb so I know that's weird bear with me okay so the word order is actually it have they which you know languages have different word orders that's something you have to get used to if you're learning a new language um, so repeat with me si las tienen si las tienen okay so just remember it goes in front of the verb does the boss have a computer okay so again no do what's the word for boss jefe now this is third person singular so what's my verb tiene no n this time tiene and computer is una computadora so my sentence is el jefe tiene una computadora el jefe tiene una computadora okay no he does not have it so uh, no there's no do there's no do not is a no right so again you know, he no have it let's put this all together no no la tiene okay so uh, this word though the word order is really a little uncomfortable maybe it's no it have he that's what's going on here but don't freak out okay no la tiene so just remember to put the it at the beginning of your verb no la tiene and also note that uh, you've got a double negative here that's not a problem in Spanish like it is in English no no la tiene what does the boss have well the word for what is k so k tiene el jefe k tiene el jefe he has a book how would you say that was the word for book libro your verbs the same he has el tiene un libro tiene un libro the employees do not have them oh poor employees don't have books but they have compu uh, computers so I don't feel too bad okay employees again empleados so the employees no have remember there's no not just no have okay los empleados no los tienen okay so libros is masculine and plural so no los tiene finally let's see what you can do on your own respond to the question that's in Spanish usted tiene una computadora usted tiene una computadora well the question is do you have a computer si sí, la tengo yes I have it si sí, la tengo tiene un cuaderno what's a cuaderno do you remember it's a notebook tiene un cuaderno si sí, lo tengo or no no lo tengo uh, computador is feminine cuaderno ends in an o is masculine so you use lo instead of la 
Sí, lo tengo. ¿Tiene una lápiz o un lapicero? Remember what lapicero was? It was one of our several words for pens. ¿Tiene una lápiz o un lapicero? Well, a couple ways you can respond to this. Tengo una lápiz. Tengo un lapicero. Or, yo no tengo ninguno. That means I don't have either. I don't have anything. Okay, yo no tengo ninguno. If you want to forget about the ninguno, yo no tengo. Or, no la tengo, no lo tengo. Depending on if you're talking about la lápiz o el lapicero. Okay, great job. Keep up the great work. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. And until we meet again, have a happy, healthy, safe rest of your day.